Hey, what's up gang? Chris at Team Aquascape. We got a special treat for you today. We're gonna be recreating this display behind me outside in the real world. Check it out. We are going to be recreating this display using this, the curved stack slate walls, the granite, and the stack slate sphere that you see way back up in there outside in a real world setting. We're gonna be taking our talents out to Dixon, Illinois. They've got a cool little splash pad, kids aquatic area they've already started. They brought us in to recreate something along the lines of this. I can't wait to get out there and get started. The guys have already hit the road. So I just wanted to take a quick second to again, show you what uh, our inspiration for this project is. And let you know how excited we are. So I'm gonna get the heck out of Aqualand, get on the road so we can get started. We're gonna be meeting up with Brian today. He's coming out to help us with this, which is always fun. It's kind of like getting the band back together. He's um, typically out doing sales consultations this time of year, really running mothership here for local market construction. He's the big boss. So it's rare that we get him out on a job with us. So super stoked. You know, he's the best designer in the world, in my opinion, of water features. So it's always good to have him out on the job. We're gonna hit the road, okay, Jack? Peace. It was a rainy, rainy morning, but rain has passed. Dixon, Illinois is a haul for us. We don't normally drive this far for job sites, but this one is kind of special because the people that have purchased this are actually donating it to the town of Dixon. Lived here most of their lives. Their children have grown up here, and so they just kind of want to give back to the community. Uh, here's our guys, right? Everybody's showing up at the exact same time. Very cool. They're putting in a big splash pad. They're doing some seating areas, different pathways and we are putting in a pondless waterfall. A low maintenance and aesthetically very appealing and safe for all the kids that are gonna be walking around this area. Oh man, look at all of the rain. <laughs> so this is the location. Here's the splash pad area. We've got this general area to kind of work in. This is electric, that's water. The key today is to get her done and make sure we stay on schedule not just with this job, but uh, hopefully keep them on schedule then for finishing this park. We've got a stack slate urn, we have stack slate walls, and a really cool little Babbly Brook granite waterfall that cuts down through it. We've got our dingo, we've got our excavator. Don't even think we'll really need this guy here, but I didn't want to drive all the way out here and not be prepared. We get the blocks, the machine down, then we can uh, dig, 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 get to work. Oh, we're gonna get a lot done today. What did you do? <laughs> Why can't it ever just go smooth? Everything was moving, machines in place, start digging. We moved this conduit right here, only to find this one. This conduit is the main electric that feeds the entire splash pad. Now we're gonna have to shift everything over from this location to probably way over here. All right, so the Hellcat is figuring out the configuration of our basin. Like he said, we had to change things a little bit. The nice thing I think about these cubes is because they're individual, it makes the system somewhat modular. Like we can change it around a little bit. That electric's running right through here. Yep. So I'm worried if we take these blocks and go like this, which is really what I wanted to do. You're gonna hit it again. Kind of go like this and go long ways with this. And then I've got extra real estate to still get something over in here. I think we can still start waterfalls up in here mm -hmm. and we'll just twist it and come down a little bit more this way. I already moved that electric so I gotta move it back now. Oh jeez Louise. I hate double work and right now I'm doing double work. Somebody's triggered. picture of the waterfall coming in this corner. I always want that waterfall as far away from the pump as possible. So I have more real estate to try to hide 
this whole vault area here. Yep. Bringing that waterfall in right here makes it really difficult to try to hide this area. Yeah. Maybe frame rock over in here, maybe frame rock here, and then our walls kind of coming off of it. We talked a lot about nothing because we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna set a boulder and like every other project, let that boulder inspire us to make our next move. Yeah. All right, break. Let's go. First track. First track. You know, when we started developing these things, we said, uh, I think sky's the limit yep. with these, and they were designed to be water walls, and then we started using them inside ponds, and now we're using them just for retaining walls, and I think that's what's so nice about the product is, because it's made out of that GFRC, we can kind of manipulate these things and do different things. So right now, about eight inches too high, so we're just cutting off the bottom eight inches and making it work to fit in with our granite boulders. You've even got a vision of, like, it's, it's too long, so we're gonna cut out a big section of it, and get it to fit right around that granite boulder, which is gonna look incredible. The idea is to make it look like, because this is obviously a man-made product, make it look like the waterfall was there forever, and that this thing was then manipulated to fit around yeah. this natural-looking waterfall. Getting kinda hungry. Where is he? Hey! What do we got here? Shout out to uh, who? Arthur's Deli? Arthur's, the guy that's donating the pond brought me one of these sandwiches and it was unbelievable. Now that we got a little bit more fuel, a little wager happening, so Joel over here has a crisp, clean $100 bill saying that what? Brian can't do this course in 35 seconds. Hmm. What's going on over here? So I have to run up the slide, through this whole thing, and at the very end, there's a red thing over there I gotta touch. Like a, I, how are you feeling right now? Nervous, a little. I used to parkour. Here we go. I hit something. <laughs> there he comes, he's through the chute. He's through the chute. Woo! Oh, 100 bucks. What happened? I hurt my back right here, but it was worth it. Dude. I mean, I know you're young, naive. I thought it was an old guy, man. I didn't think you could do it. Whoa. <laughs> That's the best, is I am an old guy. Brent. You just let that hundred bucks go. Keep no. It. You owe me lunch. I owe you lunch? Yeah. All right, I'll do that. Hey, good work, dude. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. We've got some logistical challenges. We got Joel, Matt, and Eli working on finishing up the basin here. We've got the waterfall is basically built, but right now Brian has to bring a lot of that base material over through here, build us a little road so we can get the dingo in here to backfill against the stack slate walls, which are underneath this liner that's folded over it right now. And a lot of that's just site conditions. We're having to do a little bit of prep work in order to get some work done. We're getting there. Things are moving along. See what he's doing right now, folks? He's practicing his sign language and uh, air traffic control. He's the guy on the tarmac. Favorite part so far is how that's cut around the boulder there. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got a little moss, fill that in. Now we're just placing our final part. Mm -hmm. The main reason we're doing the sphere is because if we were to go up higher with more waterfalls, which I would love to do, the berm, we would need another 20 yards of dirt. So what's nice about stuff like this or an urn or a spillway bowl is we get extra height so a lot more impact without having a massive berm. Real man right there, folks. You too, Matt. Oh, I think to the left. Right there. No, no, back to the right. All right, now to the left. Yeah. I asked you, you know, how far away do you want to uh, put the spear from the rest of the waterfalls? And you said, why don't we bring it close? That way it doesn't feel too disconnected. It's all one system. You've got the similar textures and just make it all feel like one and not like an afterthought. We've got a pretty large pump on here, so we need to bring plumbing into the bottom. So we've got a two inch line running from our pump. We had a stick of inch and a half rigid, so we're just going to run inch and a half through here with rigid PVC pipe and then have a two inch discharge underneath it. So we're actually going to T and manifold have a couple of ball valves controlling the amount of water coming to here as well as the rest of the water is going to feed the rest of the waterfall. It's going to give the illusion this sphere is the headwaters for the entire stream when in all actuality there's probably only going to be 800 gallons maybe pump it over this and the other 6,000 is going to be feeding the rest of this thing. So water is going to be ripping through here. We want high impact. We want to give the illusion that this is actually feeding the entire thing. So that's why we cord this out to be able to plumb it and get a little bit more water shooting over this. Yeah! There you have it. 
Right? Look at that urn. Huh? Nice little hidden waterfalls over there. See how, look at this, look at this, look at this. That's sweet. So we got a four day pump on here, gang. Here's where we're gonna leave it for the park district to finish it off. They're gonna plant all this up. It's gonna look incredible. Evergreen backdrops, some perennials, maybe some ground cover down in through here. I love it. The medium stack slate sphere, three curved stack slate walls. We've got the quad spill tops. I don't know, I'd say we've, we've got probably 10 tons of granite on this whole thing. And then another ton and a half of gravel. These walls are inside the liner. That wall is inside the liner and then that one is not. That wall, that wall, that wall are going to be planters. So they're gonna plant them up with uh, some soil, some nice potting mix. We went ahead and put a little bit of topsoil in there just to illustrate. Joel, my main man right there. Eli, where's he at right there? Matt, Juan, did a great job kind of finishing off the basin. You don't even know where the pump vault is. It's right there. Guys did a fantastic job, I love it. But more importantly, than me loving it is do you guys out there love it? Let us know in the comments below.